Oh, that's a nicer one. Look at that. That's fat too. There's another one. Oh, that's a yeah, that's a good perch. Or something. That's a fat striper. And you got it on? Everything on the battle start today. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Vince. Putting in work. With a uh, sea lion? Oh uh, it's a squat. It's not a deer. Well it could be. Because a lot could of be the, a sea lion, huh? Yeah, the babies were dying from that demonic acid. Oh that's right. That's why the great whites are having such a great time. Alright, so fall was officially September 22nd. So summer is gone. No. No more summer perch fishing for 2024, which I really didn't do. I've <laughs> been on the boat for a while. And uh, it is fall, which there's a couple benefits fishing fall for surf perch. Is in that time, if the water's still nice and warm in the fall, anchovy pushes in, which gets them keyed in on the baits that we love to throw, which are the jerk bait and also most of the perch i say most have already released their babies so more of the females are free game uh and what else i think the biggest thing is the fact that the bait pushes in and also the ocean is its calmest in the fall so this is fall 2024 first outing of fall. What's today? The 24th? Yeah, no, 25th. 25th. So three days into fall. It's not bad. I'm here with Bob way over there. First time he's been on the surf for a while. Yeah, first time. And then Leroy back again. I know. I think it's both of us. All three of us. First time on the surf for a while. But uh, this beach has been closed due to snowy plovers breeding they'll close out the whole area all the access to the beach for six months out of the year so this beach is closed half of the year so that this opened up last thursday which is wednesday now so it's been open for six days but we're gonna be throwing the jerk bait see what happens and uh, we'll talk more about fall surf perch fishing and we might stumble across some striper today so hopefully hopefully because they eat the jerk baits too, of course. But let's get it. We're already at a nice pocket right here. Bob hooked up immediately on the battle star, it looks like. You can see him down the beach over there. That's sick. First cast. First cast, huh? First cast. It's on, guys. Looks like a nice 12 incher. Let's keep it going. How's that? Two fish and like four casts? Three casts? Three casts, two fish. Dang, this might be quick. <laughs> All right, since Bob got that first one on the Battle Star, I'm gonna start with the Battle Star. I'm gonna start with the Sardine Glow, the Glow White Sardine, more specifically. Pull it out of the Cali cover. If you guys haven't seen these, you just keep a pocket full of these with your lure so you don't have to carry a tackle box. And, uh, you can switch out on the fly using these lure swap quick clips. They look just like a paper clip, but they're stainless steel. Take the split ring that comes stock on your jerk baits and put it on just like that. And the reason I'm throwing this instead of the 110 is because that bill allows this bait to dive a little farther. Oh, Bob's on a good one. It doesn't seem like they're very far either. Yeah, as you can see, the cut is right over here. And then that way, there's a sandbar. And you can tell because that wave way out there broke. And then you have no breaking waves right here and it's very dark. I would estimate at the end of my cast here, about 30 yards, you're looking at about 15, 20 foot deep already. But right here, you're probably looking at about 10. So nice sandbar right there. So. A lot of times that's where the fish will congregate 
And if anything happens, they don't feel comfortable, they can dart right back into the deep water. But this is where I'm gonna target primarily right now. But Bob's been getting them right in the middle of the cut over there. So they might be just on the chew. Leroy's on too. <laughs> oh my gosh, Leroy just landed a striper, guys. We've literally been fishing like, I don't know, 15 minutes. 15 minutes in, Leroy gets a legal striper? What is this? What even is this? That's incredible. I think I picked the wrong side of the cut. And you're throwing what? The, the sardine glue. Khalid, oh, Battlestar. That's the same one I'm throwing. Okay. Cool. Throw it in there. Look at that. That's fat too. Fat boy. Yeah. Probably gorging on perch. We're gonna keep these, right? Yeah. All right, I'm getting into Leroy's spot. Let's go. And he said it bit real close. While he's dispatching his fish, I'll have to give this a shot because. These things school, striped bass school, especially that size. We'll see if there's any more home. But as I mentioned, these fish are in tight. That's what Leroy said, this fish, his fish was really close when it ate and that's what's happening a lot of these bait fish get pushed in close because the water's still nice and warm from the summer and the predatory fish follow them in and that's big perch and striped bass and then even halibut too when the wave power isn't very strong they can be in this water for sure And it's actually outgoing tide right now. Uh, peak high tide was about 30 minutes or so ago. So at least there's water movement, but it doesn't really get to a deep, a, a big low tide. The tide only drops about half a foot. So let's see if we can keep this going while the bite's hot. There's a fish. Oh, that was a perch. He ate real close too. That's exactly what we we're talking about. Real close. And these waves are really nicely spaced. We're looking at 10 seconds plus between waves. Look at the big planes between the waves. That's like ideal for throwing the jerk bait. Your jerk bait's not getting run over by the waves. There's a fish. There's a fish. That's a nice fish. Oh, he popped off. That was a striper. Why am I getting, why am I losing these fish? How's my hook? My hooks are fine. I just lost a striper. <laughs> yeah, I saw that striper hit the surface. That was a unmistakable, definitely a striped bass. Especially the way the rod reacted, loaded up and everything. We'll get the next one. Oh, I saw a bait flicker where my lure landed. That's a good sign. Oh, I just saw, oh, I just got bit. I might switch lures because my hook might be dull. Might be a little dull. Zero for three right now.
There's another one. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good perch or something. No, it's a striper. He hit real close. That's a striper. I don't know if it's a keeper, but oh yeah, it's right there. Let the wave help me a little bit. There you go. I think that's a keeper, guys. That is fat. That's a fat striper. Oh man. Yeah, check that out. Let's get up on this dune right here. Go free spool. Get them on there. Free spool so you don't snap your rod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold him down one hand, use the pliers to pull out the hooks just to stay safe. But yeah, I'm, I am one for two now on striped bass. See, if you hold them down, they can't thrash on you. Oh, they're like cookie cutters. That's a keeper, huh? Oh yeah, I got a tape measure. Yeah, well, I got a tape measure too on the perch oh, pouch. That's right. Yeah, so check it out, guys. Oh, Bob, come over here. Striped bass, let's get a quick measurement on them. He bit right close, didn't he? Yeah, he was in tight. Oh yeah, that's definitely 18 inches. The lip just below the opening of the perch pouch is uh, about 19 inches or 18 and a half. So this fish is definitely legal. Look at their bellies, man. They're that's a fat fish. Real fat. Real, really, this trough, Bob, so really, down. really fat. Slow down your Look at that. You get about 10 yeah, there is, there is a lot of striped bass here right now. And then we'll put him head first in the perch pouch so that he can bleed out. Just like that. Perch pouch is 22 inches long too, in case you need to measure a halibut. But Bob's on. <laughs> no way. Oh, that's a nicer one. That's a nicer one, Bob. On the blue sardine battle star. Easy. I got, um, there you go. Woo! That was a dangerous maneuver. Woo! How'd that feel, bud? So what was, what was the secret to that one? Moving over to the trough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take yeah. yeah, so there's the cut. Well, actually the sandbar extends down this way. The main, oh, actually, <laughs> Leroy just lost his lure. I lost my lure. I saw that. Yeah, we got, we got some really good action right now. We're gonna keep it going, but yeah, he just got that on uh, the regular silver sardine battle star. So these fish are definitely hunting in the shallows. So fall, don't rush your retrieve. Fish it all the way to shore, no matter what in the fall. Cause again, that bait is pushed in close and these fish don't mind being in skinny water. Those fish that we caught, those three stripers and the one I missed, probably eight in like four feet. So this is awesome. Yeah. Bob just said, I might as well fish while I'm standing there letting it bleed. Yep, that's the design of the perch pouch. Let it keep bleeding while it's on your hip. Get all the way to shore. It's 
especially on a deeper beach like this. Oh, Bob's on another one. That looks like a good one too. Perch. Show it to the camera. Oh, oh, I'm on too. <laughs> Little guy. Me and Bob practically doubled. <laughs> Man, this guy. I let, a little, I let a smaller one go earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna let these go. Uh, I, I'm keeping this one. I only have three perch. I only have three perch in 20 minutes. Okay, Bob. Oh, I bent out my hook. Yeah, my hook's bent out. Yeah, so always check your hooks, guys. Look at that. Look at the number done on that hook right there. That one's bent out pretty good. I don't have the proper pliers on me. I'll probably try to bend it back a little bit. This might work. There you go. Yep, it's pretty close. But I will say that's why it's important to have really light drag when you're using stock hooks. Because stock hooks are thin, which means it needs less penetrating power to punch into the fish's mouth. When you go to the higher gauge, 4X strong, 3X strong hooks, you can run tighter drag, but that's mainly if you're fishing beaches that are near rocks. So you wanna keep that fish from running you into the rocks and snagging. But when you're fishing sandy beaches like this, where it's nothing to snag on, yeah, run your drag loose. Let that fish fight, get tired, bring it in the wave, with the wave assisting you. And you should be fine. I cast it right on that sandbar right there. It's like a little perch and striper highway. There's a fish. Right in the trough. A trough is basically the space between the shore and the first sandbar. So it's a nice little dip where these fish tend to like being. This fish kind of has brown in its mouth. It's been eating sand crabs, it looks like. So that's another tip on forage is their main diet going into winter starts to be less sand crabs and more bait fish and then small bait fish and then also as these tides get higher and lower towards the end of fall they start keying in on blood worms and sand worms things like that But fall is where you start seeing the change in diet. That warm weather back in the summer made the sand crabs molt and become soft shell sand crabs, which are really easy for these fish to eat and digest. But that's perfect because they're in their breeding cycle and they're needing to feed the babies that are in their bellies. So that sand crab is a really high calcium diet for them. And they're so readily available. Sometimes you'll see them by the millions, but that really hits its peak in the summertime. We got a little lull in the action. Well, I don't know if you can call it a lull. We've only been fishing maybe 45 minutes now but I'm gonna jump to the other side of this big cut to the opposite sandbar that we've been fishing. So let's see if they're on that other side too. My hooks look good, but they're probably super dull. I didn't bring anything to sharpen them. <laughs> but hopefully the, the right ones stick. 
I'm not too worried because if a larger grade model swallows this thing, even if the hooks are a little dull, they should still be able to penetrate. this what the heck is that something hit really close oh it's a halibut holy shit, it's a halibut oh my god look how he ate it look how he ate it oh <laughs> look how he ate it Dude, that was really close. I'm gonna have to drag him up the beach. That's a keeper. That's a keeper for sure. <laughs> wow, look how he ate that battle star, guys. Oh, and look what he just spit out. <laughs> he just spit out a smelt. Look how perfect that is. He just spit up a smell. That's crazy. Look at that smell. It's like perfect size. Perfect, perfect size. Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Keeper halibut on the Glow white sardine battle star, guys. That's definitely a keeper. But look how he ate it. Just inhaled and it just, it had a really big smelt that it threw up. Incredible. Wow, perch, striper, and halibut. But that's exactly what I was talking about is when that bait fish starts coming in, these predators come in shallow. You guys saw it. I was at the end of my retrieve here. We're just gonna do a quick measurement here. Again, the perch pouch is 22 inches overall length. Just actually a little bit over 22 inches in length. So I pulled my striper out. There's my perch pouch. This is about, let's close the mouth, put it at the end of the tape. That is about a 25 inch halibut, guys. Woohoo! That's so sick. So sick. All right, I'm gonna put it out of its misery. I'm gonna give it a good punch. <laughs> right here is where the brain is. He's out. Yep. One more for good measure. Now I'm gonna pop his gills. That's epic. Epic. Look at that picture right there. That's that's solid. So that was really nice of that halibut to not bite right after getting that striped bass because now my striped bass is all bled out and I can put them in my bag, in my trash bag here, inside my bag where I have frozen water bottles to do my best in keeping this fish fresh which if you're gonna take the time, hike into a spot, spend the money on gear, because you wanna eat these fish, make sure that you are taking care of them properly. And that's why it's such a good combination to have the perch pouch and a bag with some ice or frozen water bottles like I do, so you can do your best to keep them cold while you still fish. So, putting the striper away. Put my perch pouch back on before putting the halibut in. 
And now, I'll put the halibut in with the tail sticking out, but that way it can bleed out properly. <laughs> Look at that, whoop, slides right in. Awesome. I knew that was a halibut by the way that it ate because it ate close in the middle of the trough and it wasn't small head shakes like the perch. And it was pretty light at first, but then it just felt like dead weight really in tight. So there could be more of them in this area. So I'm expecting the unexpected at this point. That was, that was epic. You don't see that every day. But that tells me that the water is nice and warm. I don't have a reading, but I'm guessing it's in the low 60s. And again, the wave power is low. So this wasn't super unexpected, I guess. I mean, there's always a shot when you have low wave power, nice deep beach, nice deep troughs, and bait pushing in. As you saw, that thing had a really nice smelt, probably an eight inch smelt that it threw up, which is really close to that Battlestar 115 in the glow white. Man, it cigared it. <laughs> oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. There's a fish. <laughs> Bob just got a hell of it. <laughs> Dude, the last one jacked me, bro. Ugh. Look at my hand. Whoa. Oh, that's a decent perch. Barely a keeper. the end of my retrieve oh that's a good one that's a good one look at this one yeah so if you guys are new to surf fishing california this is a barred surf perch pretty good one probably pushing 13 inches they get to even 18 inches but this one's definitely a, a good sized one. But limit is 10 for any size, no size limit on barred surf perch. And yeah, today I've just been so blessed with that halibut and the striper that this can go back. I think I got plenty of meat. Dude! Yeah? Dude, that's a 28. That's a 28 all day. <laughs> I thought I was gonna lose this fish, dude. Holy crap, dude, that's big. Well, I decided to walk down to that flat and see what was down there. Third cast, he just ate it. And I, I knew it was, it was a good fish and I got it right to the surf line. I could see the fish and it just kept on peeling and peeling and peeling and I got nervous I was gonna lose it, but it's a it's a good one. Definitely a good one. And you got it on? Everything on the battle start today. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Vince. Putting in work. I was just thinking about what Edward was just saying in the video about the stock hooks and having light drag and not letting those hooks bend out. So when I hooked into it and I knew it was big, I just turned it back a little bit and was constantly thinking that in my mind. Stock hooks, stock hooks, loosen your drag a little. Don't bend out, that's a big fish. And it, play, it paid off just perfect. I mean, I, I played it perfect. Hooks were straight, never bent, landed that fish. So that's a great tip from the man, you know. How did it eat it? Was it deep down its throat or was it no, kind of skin hooked? It was just pinned right in the corner, bro. Oh. But two, two trebles had it pinned right in the corner, so. Yeah. I was lucky, dude. I was I was fortunate to get it on the beach because it really was peeling drag and, and taking taking me for a run. So yeah. I was very very nervous. But. <laughs> yeah. but that's so true, guys. You got to keep calm, and then trust your gear, trust your drag, and just there's no rocks out here. There's nothing that it can take you into. There's no kelp, so be confident. Let your drag loose, but not too loose. But 
if you're running those stock hooks, the beauty is it, it can penetrate really easy, but they can also bend out if your drag's too tight. Now again, if you have upgraded hooks, you can button down that drag a little bit more to be able to horse them away from structure if that's a problem. But whew, that's epic catch by Bob. We definitely had a pretty spectacular day. Yes, we did. But we'll, we'll hold them up. Bob was due. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so surf, Bob said, and I said earlier, these fish are right on the surf line because this bait is getting pushed in. Bob's big halibut and my halibut spit out some bait. Actually, I think his was like really digested like a little perch. We just shook out this fish and it's got, a, it's got another another bait not, fish in its stomach. I could not. That is a... I mean, I thought at first it was striper. That might be a perch. No, it's another it smelt. I see it and I was like, oh fuck, it's a halibut. Yeah, that's perch. And then when it gets perch to, or like, smelt, I can't really though, tell. It's been it digested. No, that looks like perch scales. That's a baby perch. This halibut spit up a baby up perch. But also, that's probably why the striper and halibut are here. It's just to pick off some of those perch that are getting born late. Actually, my buddy caught a striper here a couple days ago. And I'm going to put the picture up right now. And that was the stomach contents was a small perch inside the striped bass's stomach. And then mine spit out a smelt. Oh. Wow. Yeah. And that was epic. Right when we got here in the morning, the striper were on the chew, uh -huh. caught a few perch, and then the tide kept on going out. And then the halibut started eating in the troughs. Oh yeah, they did. Bob, tell tell us what uh, about uh, where you caught your big halibut. Well, I was working that pocket and I decided to take a little walk down to the flat and take a look what was going on. Third cast, I set into it and uh, it took me for a run. And I got very nervous because I could get see the fish in about 10 inches of water and it just kept on peeling back to the surf. and. Uh, I thought I was going to lose it and I didn't realize how big it was, but uh, yeah, I mean, this thing's probably 28 inches all day. So we'll get a good measurement on it when we get back to the truck and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And then Leroy, what do you think the key to today was? The key? I don't know, just getting out here, but I mean, the fishing the pockets on either side, you know, so we had that really nice little trough down the middle and I did whatever it told me, fish the sides. Yeah. Fish the sides. So I did first one i think it was my third cast and i got this guy right here yeah. yeah so it was a hot first 15 minutes of getting here in terms of striper and perch and i, I would say that as the tide went out it was really nice to switch gears and target the halibut <laughs> in the troughs around nice. the cuts but guys, those are the keys. I think another key is that the wave power was ideal today. Again, if this is your first time hearing about surf-forecast.com, uh, I'll leave a link to that as well. And then all the baits that we used uh, today was all about the Battle Star. Battle Star, yeah. You, I, I tried a Kalisa for a couple of maybe five casts. I got bit by perch, and that was about it. Then I went back to the Battle Star, and then I started catching big perch. Yeah, I the, mean like 15, 16 inch perch. And I never switched. I stick with Battle Star all day, and it paid off big time. I got a striper, two halibut, and probably about 15 perch. Yeah, so, so it was a good day for me. Leroy and I were throwing the glow white sardine. Bob stuck to the blue or silver sardine all day and it was overcast all day. So I think that was really key, that extra little shine. Yeah. But the glow white sardine did pretty good, caught striper and halibut and perch. I think we all did. So guys, those are the keys to fall fishing. I'm gonna leave video links right up here where you guys can check out other fall fishing adventures. I'm also gonna leave uh, a link to a playlist of October fishing, because that's coming up. But guys, yeah. was that fun or what? That was, that was awesome! Fun, <laughs>